Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today we're going to start our playthrough of Victoriana. Now, before we jump in, I already made one mistake. Do you remember Emma's basic ability is that she does not get impacted by henchmen? Yeah, I totally forgot that. <laughs> so I'm going to take one of the four leads that we already ticked over by a quarter of an hour. We're going to move that back. And I think I'm going to move the one that's way over here so that we have a little more time to get to that number three. So what I'm going to do with that lead is right now, it's this way. I'm going to turn it back to this way. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in to playing the game. Turns go quite quick in this game. All you have are three phases. Your first phase is you can move your investigator. Every investigator gets three movement. You can always suffer two wounds to get one additional movement. That's terrible, but sometimes you need to do that. You can then, after that movement, perform one. Either investigate a lead, so that means you have to end your movement on a locale with a lead token. And when you're doing that, you can also suffer one wound to take three random resources from the bag and keep one. That's a way that, let's say I just needed one more resource in order to complete that lead. That's something that you can try and do. Do you see why I didn't want to take wounds at the beginning of the game? <laughs> or what we can do is use a locale's ability, but you have to end your turn in that locale to be able to use it. Finally, if your locale has one of these location tokens, you get to flip it. Remember, all but one of them is going to be a fail. So we're going to fail a bunch until we randomly find the location of where the henchman, or the, uh, I should say, mastermind, is trying to complete its plot. When you're moving across the board, you have to make sure locations are connected. So if I wanted to go to this location, that would take one movement. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with Ada Lovelace and Charles Babbage, and I'm going to have them move towards this lead right here. We've got our lead number four. So we're all starting off in Buckingham Palace. I'll take one step into here, and then I'll end my movement, and I'm going to go ahead and investigate this lead. So what we do is we will take both of those tokens off of the board, and then we will flip this card. Okay, we'll turn it long ways, and we see it says Church of England Heretic. Okay, so we can either protect him or we can learn who controls the church. So now we get to decide which one we want to use to try and complete this specific card. And then you can see here there are arrows. If we paid one science and one underworld, we would then get to either choose to, to um, grab one card from the plot deck and discard it and then move up on the plot tracks based on that. Or we could take this card as evidence, and then it would be a politics evidence. But remember, right now, the evidence that we are looking for are two underworld and a science to take care of Sweeney Todd. So I don't know if I really need to take it as evidence. I think it might be better to actually use this for the deduction, which would mean then we would get to draw either one or two cards from the plot deck. And that's helping us burn through that plot deck. Because remember, we got to get to the bottom. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do learn, learn who controls the church. I'm going to spend two politics and one occult. That's all the politics I have. I'm kind of be, it's a little risky, but that means I get to, well, so I can either take this as evidence, which I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to take it as two deduction. Whenever you take a card as deduction, you don't get to keep the card as evidence. So I'll discard this card. Then what we do is, since we had two deduction symbols, we get to draw two cards from the plot deck. We'll flip them over. We've got a, an underground and a science. We can choose to resolve one of them. What that means is we can move up those plot tracks accordingly. I have done one politics already, so either one, it doesn't really matter. I think I'm going to do the underworld, just in case. <laughs> So, or just because I want to, honestly. But then both of these will get discarded. And now we have already pushed through three cards out of our 21 cards in here to find that final plot. So you can see that's one of the ways that we're going to win this game. We will also move one up on the Underworld plot track. Add a speciality is science. So we don't get any benefit for completing a lead that was a politics one. That's eh, okay. We still got it done. But because we did successfully investigate it, we get to generate a new lead. Essentially, that lead followed us or provided us with a new one. How we do this to create a new lead, and we have to do this by creating a lead pile and then choosing one card randomly from that pile. 
We have to generate one card from the lead deck that matches the type of lead just investigated. So I had said it was a politics lead, so I'm going to grab one card from the politics deck. Okay, Then one card from each lead deck that um, is matching a type shown at the locale where the lead just investigated. We just went to the Freemasons Hall. You can see here it is both occult and underground. So that means I'm going to grab one from each of those decks. Okay, so one lead from each of them, and I'm going to put that in that lead pile. So now I've got three potential lead cards in my lead pile. Finally, we have one card from a lead deck of the investigator's choice that matches one of the resources spent to investigate. If no resources were spent, we skip that. Well, I spent two politics and one occult. We kind of like the occult. We don't really need either of them right now. So I'm going to grab one from the occult deck. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to shuffle that lead pile and then select one unseen at random. This is the new lead. So I'll take all of those. I'll shuffle them up real good. And then I'll choose this one. Okay. And then we, we have here roll the dice to determine the lead uh, location and starting rotation. Mark location with the token. Then discard any remaining in the lead pile into a single face down stack. Any additional leads are generated from here. What this means, any additional leads, is if we had done one that we had a speciality in, so if we had just completed a science uh, lead, we would have generated another lead, but it would come from this stack of cards. Finally, we're going to go ahead and roll our dice. These two determine where we're going to place this lead, and then this one determines where that lead's going to start. Is it going to start already at the 15 hour, or the 30 hour, or maybe at midnight? So it gives us a whole hour to deal with it. So we'll pick up the dice, we'll give them a roll, and we see, okay, the line, oh man. So this one's going to start right at 1230. That's the worst that you can have. Uh, and it's going to be placed in science blue location. And I am going to make this the four again, the four lead, and I'll place this on the board. The blue two is way up here. That's the London University. Now, our final step is we're going to reveal this token. And yeah, it's blank. <laughs> Most of them, are, all of them except for one are going to be blank. So there it is. Now, we have a special ability when we end our space in an occult location, which is why I wanted, uh, we wanted Ada to go first. Our ability states, because we have spirit programming, if you end your turn in an occult locale, you may place a wild on a random locale. Any investigator moving through that locale may pick it up. We'll place that wild token in uh, Politics 8. That is the House of Parliament. Nice. That will end Ada's turn. Let's go ahead and move to Emma. Emma will be our next player. We're going to see, can she get to here? I don't think she can. I thought these were connected. One, two, three. No. No way. Now, she could get herself going towards it, which might not be a terrible idea, and she can pick up a wild along the way. So I think what we'll do is we'll have her move one, two, and then move here for three. She gets to pick up this wild token. Now, she's going to activate this location's ability. This is called Millbank Prison. She's going to go ahead and spend two underground resources to go ahead and get one deduction. So we'll grab the top card of the plot deck. We'll flip it over. Oh, it's an Agent of Evil. Seriously? Okay, so this Agent of Evil at the end of the round will come out. So we'll look at that uh, in a second. I really had to pull that, huh? <laughs> At the end of her turn, she can go ahead and flip this up. Okay, perfect. There is nothing there. That is not the location we're looking for. Now that we've completed Emma's turn, we're going to go ahead and end the round. Because after two players' turns, it's the end of the round. So when the player holding the end of round marker completes their turn, and I should state that Emma has this, this is the end of turn marker or end of round, you can give that to the second person that will go each round. Uh, but I just know that Emma and William and Miss X are my two players that will always end the round. So I'm not going to keep moving that around. <laughs> uh, what we need to do is we need to advance the time marker one space. If your time token reaches the 12 o'clock, you remove one of those time uh, tokens. And there's six of those. Then we need to rotate all active leads cards so the clock hands on their backs advance a quarter hour. Then we need to discard cold leads. Okay, and then if you have to discard a cold lead, somebody has to take a wound. And you have to move up the cold lead track. Then agents pursue. So if there are agents on the board, they have to try and move around the board and do stuff to us. 
Then we pass the end of round marker if necessary. In a three to four player game, the marker is passed two players to the left, and then play proceeds to the next player's turn. But during this agent's pursue, that's also where we're going to spawn that agent that we just drew. We'll move our time tracker one space over here. Here are our leads right now. We're going to go ahead and rotate them all a quarter of an hour. As you can see here, the most important lead right now is number four, because if that gets moved one more time, it's going to go to midnight and it's going to go cold. And then someone's going to take a wound and we're going to move off the cold track. So the next two players need to see if they can take care of this one. Now we have our agent's pursue step. So first of all, we have Cassia, the Illuminati sleeper agent. After Cassia pursues, if she's within two locales of an investigator, that investigator discards a random resource. Ooh, gross. And in order to defeat, to defeat her, somebody needs to get into her space and discard two occult, two politics, and two science. Otherwise, remember, we cannot go into the space with an agent. We can't go through them. And if they spawn in the space that we're at, we can't move out of it. We're stuck there. We'll go ahead and give our dice a roll. And we get Science 4. Kaisa spawns over here at the Crystal Palace. And look at this. One, two, two spaces away from Ada. That means Ada randomly has to lose a resource. So let me randomly grab one. And so she will lose or Ada will lose one Science. We'll go ahead and start this next round. Dion is the active player. She's going to go one, two, three. And she's going to investigate this lead that's almost going cold. We'll give it a flip, and oh, we have what's called a setback. And unfortunately, with setbacks or any advantages, you don't spawn another lead. So now we only have three leads out on the board. And we have Dorian Gray. Place this card in front of you. Place an event token on a random locale. Leads you generate enter play automatically at face down at the 30 hour. Discard this card after ending your turn at the event token's locale. So we've got to figure out where she needs to end her turn. We'll give our dice a roll, and we have Occult 9. Don't worry, that only is way over here, the Metropolitan Tabernacle. Oh my gosh, she's going to have to get all the way over there if she wants to generate leads that aren't absolutely terrible for us. <laughs> so that at the end of her turn, she'll reveal her locale token. It is blank. Yep. All right, so now we have William and Miss X. Well, we can't get to any leads yet, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Miss X move over to here, and then we'll have William move one, two. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use him to activate the location that is the Houses of Parliament because we get to place out a for sure politics. Not that we need politics. What we need is two underworld and a science, but at least we know this is for sure a politics. So what, what they actually recommend doing is putting a resource token, a politics resource token on it, and it'll come out at the midnight hour. Uh, and so I'll place tokens here, and then we'll randomly see where this is going to be located. But since we're also here, I'm just going to reveal this token, so I don't have to come back. Okay, yeah, still nothing there. We'll place this politics lead at Occult 6. That's actually right by where he's at. Nice. We've now concluded a round, so we'll go ahead and move the time marker one more space. All of our leads will now move 15 minutes. And you can see here both one and two are a little bit worrisome. I think, oh yeah, we've already planned with Emma going to two, but one, I don't think there's any chance. <laughs> so I think that'll be our first cold lead. And then we're going to have an agent pursue. Let's see what we get. We get a politics three. Fortunately for us, politics three places are way over here. One, two, she is definitely not within two of any of our investigators. Okay, so that's going to end this round. We are now on to round three. Well, it's a bit risky, but I do not like having agents around. So I'm going to go ahead and spend two wounds. So Ada's going to take two out of her six wounds so we can move four spaces. One, two, three, four. Moving all the way in <laughs> to the location with the agent. Now that means I have to be able to defeat her. With the two wilds that I have, I was able to have enough resources to be able to stop this agent. Two, two, and two. So we'll remove that agent from the board. I'm also going to look at the location token. Yeah, not, not it. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ada's location is also useless to her. She could swap any politics for underworld cards or uh, resources. Yeah, she doesn't have either of those. So, <laughs> oh well. But at least we got rid of the agent. 
So now we're going to move to Emma's turn. Emma's going to at least take care of uh, the number two lead. She's going to go one, two. We'll go ahead and look at the number two lead. And since we're here, let's just reveal this. Yeah, not the right location either. Let's flip this one up. And we have an underworld location or uh, lead. We have counterfeit money. We can either search for the maker's mark. This, whenever there's a question mark, can be any type of resource. So one underworld and one of any type of resource. We have physically traced the bills and we have arrest the counterfeiters. Uh, this is the evidence type that we need to take out our henchmen. So I'm gonna try and pay as little as possible because I'm not gonna take this as deduction. I'm gonna take this as our evidence. Uh, so I'm just going to spend one underworld and let's see what other resource i think one politics yeah because i've got a lot of politics yeah perfect one underworld and one politics i still have four politics two underworld and one wild and so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this as evidence instead of as a deduction and what's great is because now we have more underworld than the other type which is politics we can call this our speciality which means we should be able to uh, spawn out two new leads. Sweet. And you know what we're going to do? We're also going to use our special ability. So we're going to use one of our tokens. And it says here, you may rewind a lead one half turn. And so what we're going to do is take that one lead that's just about to go cold, and we're going to turn it back one half turn. <laughs> Sweet. Because we should be able to have someone get to that next round, I think. Uh, so with that, now what we're going to do is we're going to create our lead pile, and then we're going to put out two of those leads. We'll have one lead that will come from the lead type that we just investigated, which was an underworld lead. Okay. Then one card from each lead deck matching the location shown that we're at. Well, we're at an underground, or I should say, yeah, an underworld location. So we've got two red here. Then we can have one card from a lead deck for um, of the investigator's choice of one of the resources we spent. Well, we spent an underworld, so we can guarantee this is an underworld lead. And we're going to spawn two of them. That's awesome. And then this can be wild, and that should be enough for us to take out Sweeney Todd. So let's go ahead and spawn both of these two. I'll just put this one face down in the pile that we have over there. Both of these leads are guaranteed red leads. So our first one will go into Occult 8, and this one will be at the top of the hour. So that will be our number two one. And then we'll go ahead and pick these up to spawn our other one. And this one is at, oh man, it's at 1230. This one's going to be at Science 8. And this one will be at number five. Number two spawned over here in the Royal Geographic Society. And number eight, here's the X Club, but I don't think we're ever going to get to that because now we're at the end of the round. Everything's going to tick up one space or one uh, 15 minute mark. First things first, we're going to move ourselves to the third space on the time tracker. After we move to here, we'll remove one of these tokens. Here are our leads. Let's tick them up a quarter of an hour. So do you guys remember when we used Emma's ability to move this lead back a half a turn? I think a half a turn is actually two spaces. It was like this. She should have moved it back to here, I believe. If I'm wrong, let me know and I'll put it in the comments. We're just going to do that. That's what I think it is. So now let's go ahead and move all of these time trackers 15 minutes down for the end of the round. So the two leads we need to worry about going cold are number five and number three. Dion needs to get to that event tile way over there, but I think as we're going, we're going to go one, is there, are they connected? No, two, three, and come here to the Royal Geographic Society. We know this is an underworld, uh, an underworld lead, but we need that, and she's got some underworld resources, so let's give it a shot. So we'll take this off, and then since I'm here, let's reveal it. Okay, no. And yeah, you can see I'm doing the location tokens a little out of order. We should do it at the end of the round, but it's just easier for recording purposes. <laughs> Here's our number two lead. So we will take these off, and it is indeed an underworld uh, um, lead. It could have been an advantage or a setback. So we can we have a hysterical toffer, and we can either hear her out, which is one. Actually, we want to do this one if we can, because we want to use this as evidence. So we do have, wow, we do have that. We have one science. So that means we're using one underworld and one science, and then we will complete this one. Now, when we're going to place out a new lead, it has to come at the 30 mark because of our setback, Dorian Gray. 
um, which is why one, two, three, maybe next round, if we take two wounds, we can get over to that event tile. We'll generate our new lead. One of these will be red because that is the type of lead we just completed. One will be blue because our location is blue. And then this one will be blue because that's one of the resources we used and we need a blue lead. That's the one that's left. So now we can't guarantee that one of these is going to be blue, but I'm still gonna put a blue resource token on it just to say two thirds chance it is going to be a blue lead. Okay, and it's gonna come in already at the 30 mark. Let's go ahead and roll some dice. It's going to be spawned at Occult 1. Occult 1 is over here right by Ada, actually. Nice. For William and Miss X, I think we're still going to use William because we want to get to this uh, number 5 lead. It'll go cold at the end of this round if we don't. We're still going to lose lead number 3. It is what it is. But let's go ahead and look at this. Okay, yep, still not the right location. And let's look at that lead. We know this is an underworld one, and actually this might work. This will be, if we take this one, this will be our third evidence. And because Emma's evidence is wild, we can consider it blue. So we can take out the first henchman. <laughs> so we have waylaid by Ramson, Ramsman, and it says, when this lead is investigated, advance another lead a fourth of an hour. Okay, so I had to write a half of an hour. We move it back two spaces. A fourth of an hour, we move it back just a quarter of a space. Well, you know what? We might as well push this lead number three another quarter of an hour, which means ding this one has just gone cold so we'll resolve that in a second but all we have to do is give them a bunch of fives <laughs> that's amazing uh and all we have to do is spend one of our underworld resources easy that is our third piece of evidence i like it let's generate our next lead quickly so we have one red because that's the type of lead we completed. We've got a red and a blue because our location's red and blue. And then we only spent a red resource, so that's a red one here. So we'll shuffle these up. We'll pick this one. Let's roll to spawn. It'd be really nice if it didn't spawn at the 30 mark. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, no, it's it, mar it went at the 15 mark. That's not terrible. And it is at uh, uh, politics too. And it's also another one that's likely red, so I'll place a red token on there. Politics 2 is the Somerset House, right over here. Also, since the lead went cold, we have to have someone take one point of damage, so we'll have William and Miss X take that damage. And we'll move one up on the cold lead track. We have our three pieces of evidence. Don't forget that one of these is coming from Emma, which is considered wild, so we're going to take that as the science. We have the two other red. We will discard these, and we have just defeated Sweeney Todd. Sweet! One-fourth of the way through this stack. But now we have to reveal our next one, and we have a foreign operative. When revealed, each investigator on a polit politics locale must draw a resource from the bag and discard all matching resources. Okay, that's only Ada, actually. All the other... Yeah, everyone else is not on a politics location. <laughs> that's lucky. We'll go ahead and grab from the bag. Okay, and what does she get? Gets uh, an underworld. Doesn't even have any of those. <laughs> that was the best henchman pull ever. But we do need three politics in total for our evidence. We'll end this round by moving up the marker once, and we have now completed one of our six rotations around the clock. That's great and all, except for a look at these. Three of them are going to be, oh no, actually only two of them. Yeah, only two of them will be a problem for the next round. So that's actually not terrible. Let's move them a quarter of an hour. Three of them are a problem. <laughs> One, two, and four are all going to go cold at the end of this round. We're only going to be at, able to at most look at two of them. <laughs> oh, what was I saying? Okay, now we're going to move to Ada's turn. Ada will go ahead and move one, two, three. Three. We want to end in an occult location because we get our special ability. Also, we only have occult and science resources. And number two is likely a science. I, it's not guaranteed, but it's likely a science lead. And it's just about to go cold. So let's go ahead and check that out. We'll also look at the location token. Yeah, still not there. <laughs> when you find that X, by the way, it feels pretty good. <laughs> We'll go ahead and flip this lead, and we have deductive reasoning. Oh boy, look at these. This cannot be taken as evidence. 
So we have to spend, or the only one we can do is two occult, I mean, two science and one occult, but then we get to actually push through the plot deck by three. I'm actually okay with that. Uh, but that means that we have essentially no resources because using two and one, yeah, all we have left is one occult uh, resource after this. <laughs> so we're going to have to go resource hunting. Uh, but that means we will get to deduct and do three total draws from the plot deck. We'll flip three, one, so another green, a purple, and a blue. So we've done a red before. So let's do the green again because that'll get everyone one politics resource. So we're going to have, we'll move up the plot track on the politics track. Uh, and then we've discarded three more of these. And I know there was no more agents in here. We took care of that one agent. So now we're just trying to push through this deck. Great. Moving up this track means everyone will get one politics resource. So now Ada has one occult and one, <laughs> just, just one politics. We do have to generate a new lead, and we have an ability for the end of our turn. So it was a blue uh, a, a lead, so we have a blue card. Our location is both blue and purple. So one of those is blue and one of those is purple. And then this one is also blue because we spent at least a blue resource. And so we're trying to see, basically guarantee this is going to be a blue lead. And we'll choose this one. So we're going to go ahead and put this out on the board. And then we're also going to roll to place a random resource on the board. And it's a wild resource, thanks to Ada's ability, because, oh, actually, we ended in both locations. Hold on. Because our location is an occult locale, we get to place a wild resource on a random locale. Then we're going to use our special ability. If you end your turn on a science locale, which it's also science, uh, you may place uh, Babbage's brain on a lead. Each time the lead advances, draw a resource from the bag and place it on that card. And then when someone investigates it, they will then be able to gain all those resources. So I'm going to put my Babbage token on the lead that I'm going to put out this round. I'm actually going to put out two because that is my speciality, is the science. So I only chose one. Let me grab another one. We're going to place out both of these leads and then do a roll for the random resource. Wow, lots of rolls. The wild resource will go on location red, so an underworld three. Then we'll have our first lead go in, okay, it's going to start at 1215 or at the 15 mark at, o, or, um, at science five. That will be number two. And then we'll go ahead and pick up our dice again and roll for our second lead. And that one will also be at 1215. That'll be at science five. Wait, seriously? We just rolled science five. So that's going to be in the same location as the other one. Okay, that'll be number three. And so then I'm going to place it on number three. I'm going to place that Babbage token. And so that Babbage token is on here. And at the end of each round, we get to place a resource on here, which is nice. And then hopefully we can have someone investigate it right at the end and they can gain all those resources. Now, like I've said before, it really hurts to use the two additional movement, but I think I've got to do it. I'm going to use, going to Emma's turn, she's going to go one, two, three, and then spend the fourth movement so she'll take two wounds to get to here. She's then going to reveal this. Oh, still, still not the location. Uh, but then we'll go ahead and take care of uh, the number four lead. That one was just about to go cold, so... Um, we're also going to use our ability again, so we're going to use our second of our third uh, token abilities to push back the lead one another half an hour, <laughs> so that way that one doesn't go cold. We'll go ahead and flip this one, and we have the Masquerade Ball at Blakely, Blakeney Manor. When this lead is investigated, rewind another lead a fourth of an hour. <laughs> we didn't have to use our ability on that level one. Well, I already said I did. Uh, you know what? We're going to rewind number three so we can get as many resources as, po as possible on this one before someone collects it. So yeah, we'll go ahead and rewind that one. I've got to use three. Wow. I've got to use three politics, but I am going to take this as evidence because first of all, it, it's a wild for us because as, as we have that more than we have our uh, underworld leads. Although... Yeah, that's three. Oh, that's two deduction. Yeah, I still think we need to keep pushing through the henchmen. So I'm going to take this as evidence. But that does mean we're going to spawn out two more leads. See, sometimes you can get overwhelmed with leads. 
And I don't feel like I have a choice. I think I have to. If it's one of my specialities, I have to spawn two leads. You guys tell me if I'm wrong. To generate our new lead, we have one green because that's the type of lead we completed. We've got a green and a red because our location is both of those colors. And then we only use green, so we have a green lead card there. So we're going to choose two of these, this one and this one. I'm going to have both of those be very likely our politics leads, which is actually nice because that's what we need. Let's go ahead and spawn both of them. Our first one will be spawned, let's see, oh nice, at midnight at Underworld 5. That will be number 6. And then this will be at number 4, you guys. This one will be placed, okay, oh, also at midnight, awesome, at Science 6. Well, you know, we have a total of six leads on the board. Two here, two there, five and six. They're, whoops, they're all over they're actually close together which is nice but man there's so many leads and we're running out of resources this is the hardest part about this game i have to figure out and i have not figured out how to manage all the resources <laughs> i mean so far we've been able to complete all of the leads but soon that's not going to be the case we'll go ahead and end the round and then we'll jump into the next one let's go ahead and move this a quarter of an hour Here's our leads. We're going to turn all of them a quarter of an hour. Now, I have to remember that this location, the random out of this bag, I'm going to grab one random resource. Okay, it's a politics resource, but that does not mean this is a politics lead. So that's why this token's on here to help us remember that. We're actually doing okay. If you look here, none of them are about to blow. All of them, we've got at least two rounds left.